Hey, 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 everybody. Life with the Popes is back. Sorry yeah. we missed you last night. Yeah. But we are back. We're back with a vengeance. Asking for what you want in relationships is our title for tonight. Mm-hmm. And we are not going to be taking calls because we seem to get so many questions online. Yes. And even through our um, our email that we're not going to take questions live on the phone tonight. We're going to stick to the questions that get asked uh, here online and through our emails. Now, one of the things I wanted to address as everybody's coming on is that when people are asking us questions, I mean, guys, you're writing us books. Yeah. You're writing us paragraphs, stories, I mean, very long, detailed uh, examples of your situations and dating and all this stuff. And really, I mean, if you're really needing some really in-depth, detailed answers, you're going to have to schedule a time to book with us. Yes. Because we can't yes. give you detailed coaching and insight without being able to ask you questions, yes. learn what's really going on with you, and then be able to get insight from God and wisdom and experience to be able to give you direction Correct. for you. Correct. There are no really truly cookie cutter answers no. for for detailed personal experiences because everybody is unique and what could be right for one person, say, oh, you need to stay with him, honey. You need to wait. For somebody else, it needs to be, you need to get out Hit now. Moja. Go, deuces, <laughs> out. Yes, so right. we can't give you cookie cutter advice. Correct. You know, via this for, this platform, mm -hmm. live, via email. You we That's what counseling and coaching is. So can I summarize what you're saying? Yes, go ahead. Book a session with the Popes. That's what she's saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That so let's saying. welcome everybody. So hello, Facebook. Hello, Instagram. Welcome to Life with the Popes. How to ask for what you want in relationships. How to ask for what you want in relationships. Listen, tonight is about communication. And it's about the lack thereof or the misunderstanding of it. You'll be surprised how many people communicate, think you're good communicators, only to find out that what you want, you're not getting because the person did not understand what you're speaking about. So... Hey, as you're coming on, Hi, Instagram. share if you will. Hi, Facebook. Hey, Facebook. Let's get everybody in tonight. Uh, we're so grateful for all of you. Uh, have I told you I love you today? Yes. Okay, we'll tell you again. I love you. I love you too. See, that's part of communication, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, so, hey, pretty. everybody. Welcome. So nice. Let's build the audience. Hey, Ellen. Hey, Sandy. Hey, B. Renee. Hey, Selena. All of you over here on Instagram, we're so grateful to have you tonight. Those of you who look forward to us putting them on YouTube, so I think talking. they're starting to find us uh, over here where we go live because we don't really go live on YouTube. Correct. But we then upload our videos onto YouTube. Correct. So. Correct. But welcome, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to Life with the Popes. We're yes. normally Tuesdays at 8 p.m., but... We had an engagement come up yesterday evening, so we're yes. here tonight on a Wednesday. And, so and, one and we recognize a lot of people are at church too. So they, they, for those of you that watch the replay, welcome. At church. Yes, yeah, Wednesday night. Oh, this is church. For a lot of people, they go to Wednesday night Bible study, so they're not watching this right now. They'll oh. be on later. So. Oh. oh. I, you can tell who go to church. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what are you? <laughs> Look, don't get me started, Mr. Pope. Do not get me started. Stop good. Stop now. I'm just saying. Hush. We know you the minister. Hush. Woo. Yes, I am. Jesus. You the full lady. Okay, so when it comes to communication, the reason we chose this subject for tonight when it comes to asking for what you want in yes. relationships. So one of the things we're going to point out, because remember the theme that we're on is friends with benefits. Because yes. that's how we treat our marriage. In other words, friendship first, taking yes. off titles and hats, the expectations that come with traditional expectations yep. of, of husbands and wives and saying, okay, what about being really, truly best friends and coming from that perspective? Yep. So in line with that, when we're talking about asking for what you want in relationships, it really goes hand in hand. Now, and I will say this, for those of you watching who are not in a relationship, but you're, you want this knowledge of how to ask for what you want. This applies to all relationships, not just romantic relationships Correct. or marriage. Correct. This applies to friends, family, coworkers, employers. This applies to everything because learning how to ask for what you want 
is a very necessary skill set in order to live abundantly and have the life you desire. Correct. So I'm going to start it out with the very first thing about communication. Men and women communicate differently. Oh, my God. Okay? Men are from Venus. Women are from, I don't men even think it's Mars. Mars. Y'all ain't from Mars. Men yet. are from Mars. No. Men are from Venus. That's what okay, we're from Mars. You guys are from Pluto. Y'all are way out there. Okay? Whoever tried to put you close, we do not communicate the same. So for that reason, that's where a lot of issues come from. So let me give you, let me give you a scenario. Have you ever been um, talking to someone of a foreign language? And they're talking to you, and then all of a sudden they turn to their partner, and they start talking their language, and you have no clue what they're saying. And so they start laughing, and you don't wonder, are you laughing about me? Or what's going on? Because the communication. It's the same in a relationship. If you're talking to your spouse or someone, and you're talking in a foreign language, then you're wasting your time. You're not going to get anywhere. You're going to get more frustrated because of the simple fact you're not communicating. You're talking or you're expressing and, you know, in our marriage, we are two great people, but we struggle with communication. We struggle with saying what we really want because you think you're saying it, but the other person who's understanding it another way, which in this case, Rebecca, you know, she may say, well, just tell me what you want. Just say it. Well, that's what I was saying. No. Really, our communication styles are so different. And it's not just like, oh, men are just like this and women are just like this. Mm -hmm. There's also nuances. I mean, for, for the individual, some people are very direct. Other people take their time yeah. expressing themselves. I mean, it, it literally just depends on the person. And it's important to get to know the person to be able to recognize, okay, this is what he's trying to communicate. Mm -hmm. This is what she's trying to say. Sometimes we have to be willing to listen yes. with our hearts and not just our ears. Because when, as you're getting to know somebody, then it becomes, because it can become very frustrating mm -hmm. if you keep listening with your ears, but you, you're you not understanding what the person is saying Correct. or it gets, you know, it's easy to misunderstand and miscommunicate mm -hmm. when you're not listening with your heart. What is it they're trying to say? Yes. What is the, because here's the thing, men, we, we are limited in our emotions, Okay. So we basically say how we feel, and then when you don't get it, then our limitations of emotion goes from I'm telling you to now I'm pissed. And then we do the next emotion, shut down. Most men are not going to sit there and go back and forth trying to explain, like, forget it. Don't worry about it. I got it. And that's something that you have to pay attention to. Now, women, on the other hand, and my wife, she, she's one, that she she's kind of got a little, little male testosterone going on inside of her because... Sometimes like she, boss. you know, she, she, she forget that, you know, you know, I'm her husband. So sometimes and I forget I'm her, she's my wife. So sometimes we talk to each other like we may be talking to our coworkers that we, that mean to people that we, you know, we're over and you can't do that either. You can't communicate to your spouse like you're communicating to someone who's under you because your spouse or your person is not under you. Not they're an beside employee, you. not a client. They're not a client. They're not an employee. So don't come talking about, listen now, you need to do the work. Excuse me. I'm your husband. I'm your wife, not your client. And you have to remember that, how to communicate effectively. And as Rebecca said earlier, there is no cookie cutter. So how she communicates, how, when we have sessions with couples and we do uh, couple counseling or premarital, each couple is different. So when I deal with them, I have to learn how they communicate and teach them on their level of communication how to be an effective communicator. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and also... You know, there's a dynamic in a relationship. Just because someone may be like this with someone else, they can be totally different in a, in a relationship. So sometimes, because it, because a relationship is like it's alive. It, it, mm -hmm. It's like it's, it's an organism. It's an organism. It's mm -hmm. flexible. It's mm -hmm. changing. It's moving. It, it's it's the, the dynamic, the energy is feeding off of each mm -hmm. other. So just because they were like this in a previous relationship doesn't mean they're like that in this relationship. Come on. That's right. Right? Because there's a new dynamic because there's so many variables to our personalities, our character, our moods, our brains. We all process so differently. So yeah. like for one person, they could they you could have been dating somebody before and they didn't like how you communicate or they didn't like something about you and that'll be the very thing that the the person for you loves. loves. Yes. So all of a sudden what what you felt like might be a flaw 
something that you felt like maybe I need to work on that about myself. Maybe I am too assertive. Maybe I am too straightforward. Maybe I am too direct. The next person will completely appreciate that about yeah. you because they're going to always know where they stand. Yeah. Because here's a good example. Uh, Rebecca could be straightforward to the point where I think she's now being too straightforward. So now I feel like I'm being attacked. So you have to learn the other person and learn how to be skillful. So one way that we, we communicate is when we have something very hard or tough we need to talk about, we'll say, baby, I want to talk to my friend. I want to talk to I want to, I, I don't want to attack you. I want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing is you're laying uh, a foundation that what I'm getting to share next is going to be tough. It's not going to be our different, our average conversation. And, and that can be like one of you can create a catchphrase, you can create a safe word, you yes. can create something that that prepares your partner to say, okay, don't get upset, hold your peace, you know, and, listen. and, just, listen. and just listen, don't get defensive because mm -hmm. whatever they're getting ready to share or whatever they're getting ready to say might be a little difficult, but understand it's difficult for them to say as well. Yes. It's not just difficult yes. to receive. Yes. So, because one of the other things that I wanted to make sure I pointed out, like previously, like Carrie thinks of me as very, very direct, but I haven't always been direct. I didn't grow up being direct. I didn't grow up speaking my mind. I had to learn how to speak my mind. I had to learn how to ask for what I want. And I did that as an adult because if you go through life long enough and you're a people pleaser or you're worried about people's feelings all the time or you're worried about saying the wrong thing or you're worried about how you're going to be perceived or you're worried about stepping on toes, you're going to just kind of tiptoe around things, mm -hmm. but then you're also going to be very unhappy. Mm -hmm. Because in my previous marriage, I wouldn't speak my mind. You know, I was raised, my father was an apostle, raised in the church, you know, a pastor's kid. I, my mother tended to be very passive in her communication style. She tended to hold her peace a lot, not call my dad out on things. What was exemplified in it as an example and role model for me was you don't really speak your mind. Be submissive. You, right. You be submissive <laughs> or you be passive right. or you pray about it, mm -hmm. but you don't really communicate with people around you. But there was also a subconscious um, uh, truth or a subconscious belief that somehow because you're such a good person that because of your example your your actions are setting an example to others that now people are supposed to love me and honor me and want me to be happy and do for me the way I do for others because I'm such a good person but I never verbally ask for what I want I never just I never communicate my needs or my wants but now I'm sitting here frustrated I did that with my ex-husband completely frustrated in the marriage completely unhappy but just sitting there and not saying anything because no one taught me or role modeled how to ask for what you you want and if I can go back and, I'm, and I got some good stuff because I want to piggyback to when 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 we were growing up and Rebecca and I have very similar backgrounds and many of you may be able to attest to what I'm going to say but we were taught be quiet shut up do as I say don't back talk and you got that as a child so if you didn't have an understanding or if you felt a certain way you were not allowed to say it because it was considered disrespectful. That's right. Or back talking. Like being a stay in a child's child. place. But what they were actually doing as parents was they were they were uh, repressing repressing your ability to communicate, and so you found yourself becoming my. I can't. I, I never learned how to speak as a child. So now as an adult, I don't feel free and comfortable to say how I felt because I was always reprimanded when I wanted to speak my emotions. So you actually cripple that child's communication abilities. Versus saying, okay, let me teach you how to ask for what you want respectfully. Right. Let, me ask, let me teach you how to speak how you feel respectfully. Now we're communicating because believe it or not, children's feelings are important just as an adult. So with my first set of child children, Patia and Tony, I was hardcore. And I don't know how you were yourself. Well, I, with this last set we have, it's like we're teaching them how to communicate. So we listen. And sometimes we're wrong as parents. Sometimes we take out our frustration on them. Mm -hmm. And then so when you learn how to listen, you actually are training them how to get into a relationship and ask for what they wants. 
You ask for what they want. Use their voice. Use their Speak voice. Speak your yes. mind. Yes. Express yourself. That your voice matters. Your yes. feelings matter. Stand up for yourself. Say no. Mm -hmm. Say no thank mm -hmm. you. Yep. Right? Yep. Bit, but that starts with our kids. But we weren't taught that. It's, nope. And I can speak. I want to speak for one second for women. Sure. Go ahead. Especially Christian women. Right? We weren't taught. In other words, we were taught, especially when it comes to men. When it comes to men, and what what I've learned and realized over the years of working with clients and teaching, coaching, is that women compartmentalize. Because see, our mothers and our grandmothers were very traditional in that they were trying to be submissive, they were trying to be always be respectful and honoring their husbands. They were trying to do it according to the Bible, according to tradition and culture and society, the expectations, right? But many of them were very were miserable. They never asked for what they want. They didn't they didn't literally none of their needs and wants were being met. Mm -mm. But they were just important. quiet because mm -hmm. literally they depended on men financially for mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. that they, they weren't really allowed to have a voice. And so we, here we are, this generation, Generation X, Millennials, you know, here we are now becoming, we're in the workforce. You know, we're out here making money. We're out here doing well financially. We're not as financially dependent on men. So the whole structure has changed. But what women have done is still compartmentalize. Women will be very decisive, expressive. They will communicate in the workplace. They're professionally, they know how to stand their ground. They're, they'll, they know that to be respected professionally, you can't be a pushover. You've gotta be able to ask for what you want, express needs, and, and that's part of being respected you know, because we're now moved over into that man's world of work and profession. But when it comes to relationships, women still compartmentalize. They are still going with the example that our mothers and grandmothers and great grandmothers set that no man wants a woman to be nagging. No man wants a woman to give ultimatums. No man is going to want to stick around for you saying what you want, what you don't want and how you want it and what you're going to do. And what you... So we're taught to still stifle our voices in relationships, which is why most women don't get what they want from men. And to be honest, Carrie, I hear women all the say, like, Rebecca, bitches are out here winning. Hoes are winning. I'm just being real. This is the comments on YouTube. Rebecca, you know, men don't want a godly woman. They don't want some woman, you know, that's really got morals and standards. That They want these easy women. They want women. And that's not really it. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, though, men still respect women who have a voice. Yes. They respect women who speak up and stand their ground. Now, you could say that that's more like a challenge. In other words, men love a challenge. Men love a woman with backbone. They really do. Watch this. Men love women with backbone who still know how to respect her man. And to still be feminine. And still be feminine. He, he Listen, um, something I want to go back to that was important. I want you to read this comment to the bottom right. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm most, 30 minutes in, we'll start taking questions. No. Okay, go ahead. Uh, most times, what we have a tendency to do as church grower, you know, church goers, and you grew up in a religious foundation, you're taught how to be a servant. You're never taught how to be served. That's so true. You're taught how to be a servant, but you're never taught how to serve. So as being a servant, you don't need to be asked of what you're wanting to get because you're too busy making sure their needs are met. And so now, as you come into your own, your needs are just as important. Your, your voice needs are just, just as important. Uh, 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 let's be real. Uh, they used to say a closed mouth d doesn't get fed. You have to say what you want. Now, here's the problem with me, and I can be transparent tonight. I was taught to be a servant, so when I need to ask Rebecca for what I want, in my mind, I'm trying to correlate how to get my words right so that I don't seem offensive or seem petty. Catch it now. And when you think that your words are going to be petty, then you try to find the right words to say, but end up saying the wrong words because you're not really saying what you want. Right. And so with me, I can go all the way around the world to get across the street when, for, because I'm feeling like, well, I shouldn't have to ask you for what I want. You should already know it. You should know your role. You should know what to do for me. Now, everybody going, no, like, tell me. I'm a mind reader. What do you want? Yeah. Because here's where we go wrong with this. When you assume that someone knows what you want, you are not taking into account their previous experiences. And what I've learned That's about it. diversity of people is what one man wants, 
The next man hates that. Mm -hmm. What that man likes, the next man don't like it. I mean, it literally, you have to treat people as individuals. You can't read their mind. Have you ever met somebody or dated someone and literally, like, they will start doing, they do a behavior or something that they, I think they think it's pleasing or they think that you will like it because the last Mm -hmm. person liked it. And then you finally have to speak up and be like, look, you don't need to do that. I don't like that. And they're like, oh, you don't? Oh, well, the, my last girlfriend liked it or so, who so liked it or all the women I've ever dated told me they liked it. And I'm like, well, I'm not all the other women you dated. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's important. And as we talk about the Ready, Set, Love course, what's important in that is to know the person that you're with, not the person you've been with. And you have to take the time to get to yes. know people. For yes. those of you who are dating and you want these cookie cutter answers, you want this shortcut to love. Mm-hmm. Love isn't built overnight. No. So you have to take the time to get to know somebody mm-hmm. for who they are. Stop trying to figure out theories and rules. At the end of the day, each person you meet, you are going to have to get to know them as an individual. Yes. There's no shortcut around that. You're going to have to vet them, mm-hmm. qualify. Mm -hmm. discovery questions Mm -hmm. you're gonna have to take your time and that's the key take your time one of the things that I do when we have our coaching for premarital is I ask are you sexual I ask the couples what do you expect in the bed what do you expect when it comes to raising children well, who's going to call the last? Who's, who's going to call the shots? Who's going to make the hard decisions? You know, we go over this because that's part of communicating. Because you know how many people get married and have never had those conversations? Probably 95%. Have never talked about expectations around mm-hmm. sex, mm-hmm. expectations around money. Mm-hmm. Do you know how many people just want to be married or up and get married? We fall in love and we get married. But now you get married. And now here's these yep, difficult on. situations mm-hmm. Where you're not agreeing, well, my mama and daddy did it like this. Well, my mama always said, well, this. And so now you're in this situation where, and a lot of the time, expectations are not being met, but the expectations were never even communicated. And that's, thank you, Rebecca. That's key. How, like she said, we're not mind readers. So if you never have expressed what you need, I'm only going to give you what I know you like. If I did this and then you didn't fuss, then you everything you like. It. And so you keep doing what a person likes. So that's why up front, when Rebecca and I met, I shared with her what I expected. She shared me what she expected. And we had a, we had an honest conversation about what's <laughs> what. She knew, don't come up here and try to get holy and forget, you know, how to drop it like it's hot. Don't come in. I had expectations. And she expected me to be a man and supply and, and provide and do. And so guess what? When you don't do it, You don't just say, okay, it's okay. No, you got to communicate that you're not meeting my needs. And I didn't marry you just to be in a situationship. I married you to be my my husband or my wife. Or if you're in a relationship with someone, voice what you, the only way you're going to get what you need. You notice I say, now I know it says to get what you want, but some things is a need. You have to, because here's the problem. If you don't get it from her or him, you're going to get it from somebody else. And that's where your problem comes in at. So here's our first step. First step. To asking for what you want. Yes. Be honest. What did you say? What what, what if I can't be honest? Most of the time, what's standing between you and asking for what you want is you're simply not being honest. You don't think of it as lying, but it is. Because if you dance around... And, and walking on eggshells, worrying about 